I thought I'd start off with a, sh with a short reading to get you in the mood for the rest of the show. So what I have here, I've brought up with me tonight, is basically the sexiest Mills and Boone ever written. <laughs> and I stand by this, and uh, this is, of course, Sandra Martin's Emerald Fire. I've read hundreds of thousands of Mills and Boone, well, not hundreds of thousands, but I have read hundreds of Mills and Boons. This is definitely the hottest of them all, and is set in the Puerto Rican jungle, the land of hotness, and also skin irritation. <laughs> <laughs> so I'll have a short reading of this, and uh, we'll see how we go. So can we have a bit of backing music? Thank you for allowing that idiot to make some delightful noises of his own there. Page 120. She trembled as he traced the fullness of her flesh, first with his hands, then with his lips. He rubbed his cheek against the tender skin. It was days since he shaved. His beard was soft. Feathery light, its touch so electrifying that she cried out. He touched his tongue to one rosy red-crested nipple and she held her breath. <gasps> Waiting for the moment when he'd take a deep breath. Hungry a taste when he did when his teeth closed lightly on the puckered bud. Flame shot through Bryony's body and pulled like liquid fire between her thighs. <laughs> Sweeter, he whispered. Sweeter than honey. He moved up over her, kissing her mouth while his hand slipped over her belly. He undid the button at her waistband and she whimpered like a dog as his fingers slid down. I, I'm actually reading this verbatim. He does describe her like that. And uh, finally, his, his thumb stroked against her nylon-covered flesh and she arched against his finger. Or oh, thumb. And it's quite <laughs> clearly. Well, I don't then know what's going on. You don't... I mean, I prefer this. There's just a better surface area and you can get a good... Well, you can get a good purchase on... <laughs> anyway. She arched against his finger and cried out his name. Slade! Mm. You know you're going to get fucked good when Slade's in the house. <laughs> she watched as his hands went to his jeans. Slowly, he slid them from his body. He was perfect, as she had known he would be. The broad shoulders and muscle chest tapered to a narrow waist and hips. His legs were long and muscular, and his sex was proud and exciting, rising from the mountain of dark, luscious hair that surrounded it. <laughs> You're beautiful, she whispered. <laughs> and he smiled. He ran his hands over her again as if to memorize every soft curve. Gently, he parted her thighs. He kissed the softness of her skin, breathed in her scent. Well, it is the jungle. <laughs> She's wearing nylon and it's a fabric that does not breathe well. <laughs> I love there's always a patter of applause for that joke. Like in the tropics, you guys, yeah, we get the fungus. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we're all about the fungus. <laughs> he buried his face against her and kissed her intimately until again she cried out. you could hear that but as I said it the baby went ah! <laughs> that is so so disturbing <laughs> then he lifted his head looked at her face watched her as he slid his fingers against her slick wet nylon covered flesh <laughs> I, don't, I just get an image of a man doing this Briony arched toward him in ecstasy. She reached for him, needing to touch him as he was touching her. Her fingers curled around him as far as they could. <laughs> His cock was like a baguette! He was hot like flame, as hard as steel, yet with the smoothness of silk. And really, isn't that what any woman wants in a monstrously oversized penis? I'm sure. I'm sure you've seen them before, ladies. Will you be like, well, uh, Matthew, it's definitely burning hot. I really should be wearing oven mitts before I handle it. It's hard as tungsten steel, but I, I don't know, it's kind of gauzy. It feels like a kind of broad cotton weave. I don't want it inside me. Get out of my house. <laughs> and she stroked him. 
her rhythm matching his until with a startled cry she exploded against his hand. <laughs> Slade growled his triumph. <laughs> He bent and kissed her, taking her soft moans into his mouth, and then he drew back. <laughs> and inevitably came forward again, I would imagine. <laughs> Bree, he whispered, her lashes fluttered open. She looked at him, at his dangerous smile. <laughs> at the dark green fire of his eyes, slowly he leaned forward, not to enter her, oh no, but to brush the fullness of his massively engorged sex against her swollen flesh. I, I don't care how revolting a human being you are, that is the most disgusting image, this kind of big engorged like insect larvae thing, sort of <laughs> like trying to push a marshmallow into a coin slot, it's just, <laughs> well it's in your mind now. Sensation shot through her again, arrowing from her dewy center to every part of her body, and she knew that what had just happened was only the beginning. Slade, she saw. Slade, Slade, please, but he was relentless, moving himself back and forth against her until she was mindless with abandon. Then at last, he entered her. And a cheer went up from the crowd nearby. <laughs> Briny clasped his head, dragging his mouth down to her. Slade was filling her beyond anything she had ever imagined, not just physically, but in a million other ways. <laughs> Dubious. She cried out as he began to move, pulling back slowly, then rocking forward. His hands beneath her, cupping her buttocks, lifting her to him. He caught her mouth with his, his tongue duplicating the motions of his body. very delightful, Mr. Tongue-fuck. Please continue. <laughs> Suddenly she tensed, dazzled with pleasure, yet terrified, knowing he wanted to take her to a place so high she might reach it and tumble off into space. Fuck yes! <laughs> Where all women go when they come. Oh, I'm in an airless vacuum. I'm being crushed from the inside out. It feels, it's quite nice, though. Please continue. <laughs> come with me, love, he whispered. Come with me. Come. Come on, do a... Come over here. <laughs> there was no way to resist. Sobbing his name, Briny gave herself up to him, riding his passion and making it hers. She shattered in his arms, bursting into a million pieces as bright as sunlight, soaring up and up into the sky, then slowly she drifted to earth safe again. And Slade's embrace. She was willing to admit she'd misjudged him. <laughs> he might be an adventurer, a field geologist who chased dreams. <laughs> but he certainly wasn't evil. Was he? <laughs> Thank you very much, Cans. Have a lovely night. <laughs>